Hi, I'm William Quigley, and this is a short demo on using Veeam Backup and Replication, also known as VBR, with Amazon S3 and Glacier Storage Services. What you're looking at is my VBR server. When I select Backup Infrastructure, Backup Repositories, you can see that I have several S3 buckets configured already. Let's add another repository. We'll select Object Storage and Amazon S3. We'll also select S3 at this step. Keep in mind, Veeam data needs to land in S3 before it can go to Glacier. Glacier is best for long-term archive of full backups. And you can use Snowball if you want to copy extremely large volumes of existing backup data into S3. I'll give it a name. So I've added an IAM user called Veeam S3 user. And let's go switch over to my AWS console to take a look at that user. The Veeam S3 user has an inline policy called Veeam S3 policy. As with any IAM policy, it's a good idea to limit access to the minimum scope required. You can see that I'm only allowing this Veeam user to access buckets that start with Quig's Veeam. Back in the Veeam console, I can select the region where I want to store this data, and I can browse my buckets. Even though I have many buckets in this account, I can only see these buckets because of my IAM policy. And we'll put this in a folder called Veeam Backup. As you can see, there are several options here for the new repository. We can limit the object storage consumption to a specified value. And we can make backups immutable for a specified number of days. This is not only a best practice from Veeam, but also a really good idea because we have noticed an increase in the sophistication of malicious attackers. For example, ransomware, they are now attacking backup infrastructure and doing things like deleting buckets. So immutability is a really good idea, although I'm not going to do it for the purposes of this demo. Also note that immutability is a two-step process. First, enable object lock on the S3 bucket in the AWS side, then check this box to make backups immutable. If you don't enable object lock on the bucket, then this checkbox will be grayed out. What I will check is that I'm going to use the infrequent access storage class. So once this repository is created, I have three choices. I can use this repository to create a new scale-out backup repository, or SOBER. I could edit one of my existing backups to use this repository directly, or I could create a new backup job or policy to use this one. Now you can see that the new repository called Object Storage Repository 6 has been created. It's an S3 repository. We can see the path into the bucket. And we can see that there's no data in it. So I'll go and click on Home, Jobs, Backup. And you can see I have a backup job here that I'm calling Critical Infra Backup. It's a Linux backup. Uh, and right now it's targeting the sober direct to object storage buckets. And so I will disable this backup and I'll change it to target our new object storage bucket that we just created. We'll skip forward to storage. And we'll change this repository to object storage repository 6. We're going to keep all the retention policies the same. Now, since this is just a basic object storage repository, it's not actually going to archive data into Glacier. This data will remain in S3 for the entire retention period. And once I change this backup to target the new repository, I'll start a new backup. And then I'll pause so that we can get some data into that bucket. Run the job when I click Finish. So after some time, we can see that this backup has completed successfully. And if we go back to the AWS console, 
we can see a number of prefixes and objects that were created in that bucket representing this backup. I hope this has been a helpful overview of how to use Amazon S3 and Veeam to backup your data. Thanks for watching.